They, they think they picked us because we can both step up there unassisted. <laughs> Pick the long-legged ones. All righty. Um, if I'm comfortable up here, it's because I'm envisioning each one of us walking around Burke Lake together, and I'm just doing this talk with you individually. <laughs> so that's where we are in my mind. Um, so we're working our way through this verse. Oh, I'm Leanne. Um, we're, <laughs> we're working our way through this verse, and we've been focusing on uh, who God is, who we are in Christ, who we are as women in Christ. Um, and we're moving along into, um, uh, Megan did such a great job of created us anew in Christ um, and what he can do with what, who we think we are and who he asks us to be. And so I'm moving on to we can do the good things planned for us long ago. So in different translations, um, it can be read as do the good things for good works or unto good works. So I think it's pretty clear there's work to be done, right? There's a lot of work in there. Um, so, however, as the great philosopher Andy Bernard from The Office quotes, I wish there was a way to know you were in the good old days before you actually left them. So I wish there was a way to know what those good works are when I'm supposed to be doing them. <laughs> because sometimes it's not clear to me. Um, if there's one thing that has defined my life besides Jesus' grace, unbelievable grace, on me, it is work. Um, I was raised as a homeschool farm girl in Frankfort, Delaware. And, uh, like, the whole deal. Raising chickens, deer hunting, prairie dresses, 4-H, Civil War reenactments, hoop skirts, yes. Whole thing. Very barefoot and dirty childhood. It was great. It was awesome. I can skin a deer. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a skill. You know, the apocalypse may come. Um, <laughs> can meet me at the farm. Um, so I bailed hay right alongside the hired men that my dad paid to bail hay. I got paid in sub sandwiches and root beer, but you know, that's life as a farm kid. Um, you feed your animals before you feed yourself, and you do not go to bed until everything is finished. You work, and you work hard. Uh, so that's one thing farm life taught me was to work hard and buy good shoes. Um, so after farm life, I move into ballet because I wanted to completely turn everyone's world upside down. Um, so next I started ballet, and I started it really late, so I had a lot of catching up to do. Usually people start ballet like when they're itty-bitties. I started at 13. Um, and super late. So I would drive an hour and a half away from my house to take classes with the eight-year-olds and the 11-year-olds and then my own level. And I would sit and I would study and I would watch and I would just beg to be there. And I just soaked it up and I loved everything about it. Um, me and my friends all had the same away message on AIM. Because yes, I'm 35. Uh, and it was, sorry I can't, I have dance. It was my whole life and I loved it. Um, but ballet is a lot of work, right? A lot of the work put into it is to make it look effortless, but it's a lot of work, and it hurts <laughs> a lot. Um, but I loved it, and I already knew how to work really hard. So fast forward to God doing wonderful things in my life, completely switching upside down what I thought I wanted, right? Um, I go to college. I move to D.C. I meet my husband. I convince him to date me. <laughs> I married him. Uh, <laughs> Got him. I told him I could salsa dance, and I lied. I couldn't. Uh, uh, you know, he's very good, and I'm not. So uh, he taught me. Um, I'm a first-time parent for the first time, and I'm coming into a very uncharted season for me, which is where I can work as hard as I want, but I can't change the circumstances around me. And that's weird for me. Um, so I have medical issues, I have family accidents um, that happened, tragic family stuff. I have my own health issues. And it's a season where I have to give up control and give my trust completely to the Lord. In my parenting, my career, my marriage, it's not about the effort I'm putting in or about measuring the effort of everyone else around me. I was really good at that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the good work that was in front of me did not look like what I thought it would look like. It wasn't 
easy, and it wasn't good to me. Um, so as a mom, like many of you, I've worn, worn almost all of the work hats. I've managed a business with my baby there on site. I've dropped my daughter off while I go to work. I've been a stay-at-home mom. I've been the mom that calls in to bail on work because my kid is sick. I've been the business owner that's had to leave her kids to go cover for that mom that had to stay home. I've done a lot of those things. Um, I don't recommend buying a business when you have a three-month-old, by the way. Not fun. Um, <clears throat> I've done a lot of things in my life, but that doesn't mean that I've always done them well at all. Um, I've been fired for my bad attitude, for talking behind my boss's back and thinking I knew better. Um, I've lost my own employees for my lack of empathy. Um, and I've certainly not exemplified Christ in all of my work interactions. Um, but looking back now, I know that even those hard, bad days were the good old days. So just like now, um, when I'm faced with new medical challenges, uh, when my mother-in-law moves into my house for four months, Uh, when I'm frustrated and not moving forward fast enough with everyone else around me that isn't on par with what I want, when I'm frustrated, um, it's all good work. It's all in front of me, and it's all good. It just doesn't look like good work. It doesn't look like good things or ministry. Um, so this position at Breakaway is the first ministry position that I've officially ever held. But I know, really, I've been in ministry this whole time. Uh, with my marriage, my kids, my career, it's all his good work uh, that's laid before me. So you have a totally different set of good work in front of you. It's going to look different than my story and my life. Your relationships, your life, tough situations can be good work even when it doesn't feel good. Getting fired didn't feel good, but it made me humble. It made me a better employee. And it made me a much better boss when the time came. Getting a pacemaker at 24 didn't feel good, but it gave me a lot of confidence in medical establishments to help my daughter now that she has a lot of medical stuff going on. Um, God is looking to constantly bring you back to him so that you can lean on him, so that you can do the good work that he has planned for you. So we're all in ministry. It just looks different for each and every one of us. And our God is an individual God. And he knows what your ministry is. And he knows the good work that he has set in front of you. So I teach ballet now, uh, which is different than I thought my career would go. I teach fitness, which I never thought I would do. Uh, but I get to enjoy that. I love that. I get to encourage people. I'm not a verbal encourager. I'm a physical encourager. Like, you can do it. Five more. You know, so that's what I'm, I'm good at. Uh, <laughs> Don't be a wuss. Yeah, so that's the farm kid coming back out again, you know. <laughs> Different gifts of encouragement. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but he is the source, right? God is the source of our ability to handle all of that. When I really need to get through a situation that I feel like I'm not equipped for, right? My personality isn't perfect for encouragement. Or my personality is not one of patience and peace. Um, it's not about my personality. It's about me relying on God. So everything that he puts in front of me is about me asking him to get me through this. Because I can't do it on my own. And I know that you have those situations too. So he is our source, our ability to handle these good things when they don't feel so good. Hard work is hard. Life can be tough, and we're not promised an easy road. But we trust in him and who he says he is and who he says that we are. Um, we trust in our identity in him, and we know every good and perfect thing is from him. So if it's good work, then it is from him. So you don't have to question if you're in the good old days, because you are. You were and you are. Um, I'm going to lead us into a time of reflection. I have some prompts. So I, we want to always leave this space for however you want to use it. Some people don't journal, don't write, so don't do that. Um, pray. Um, so these are just some leading questions to kind of get you into this space. Um, I certainly don't have the answers for you. I don't know what the work in front of you is. I don't know what it looks like. But 
I can promise you that God is going to use it to bring you closer to him, no matter what it is. Um, so those are just some prompts to get you into that mindset. Um, you can pray over them. You can journal over them. But we wanted to give you that time to work through it because we're all coming through those doors with something. When I came to Breakaway and didn't do anything on stage, I came through that door with so much. It's when I owned a business and I couldn't talk about it or my daughter had another surgery and I didn't want to talk about it. And that's okay. You don't have to dump it on someone else's feet, but I want you to dump it at the feet of Jesus. I want you to see the work and the things that are in front of you and have that bring you closer to him. Um, because I, I promise that's what it's, it's there for. Um, and it doesn't always feel good. Um, so pray, journal, sing. Uh, we're going to play a great song um, that's nice and long, so we have plenty of time. And I just want you to think about the good work and the good things that God has set before you. And I just want to encourage you in your time um, of work and in your ministry that you have, because you can do five more. Mm -hmm.